Well, hello there, you caught me mid-flow. Let's get going. whether you recognise that little piece. It's Minuet in A by Elisabetta Gambarini. Now this month in the Curious Piano Teachers we've been exploring the work of female composers right down the ages and Gambarini has you know over the last couple of years actually become one of my favourite um, composers from those early years and that piece you might recognise Minuet in A is on the current grade two syllabus. It's actually the first part, the minuet, leads on to a whole series of variations and I might give you a little taste of those in a minute because I have got some of the original, well not the original, but you know, I've got the rest of the variations here as well. I think this is a really truly delightful piece by Elisabetta. Now she was actually a professional singer, she sang um, in some of Handel's oratorios, so she was very well known in London, she had a lot of very distinguished and well-off patrons who would support her in her singing and actually in her music making. Of course back then it was really difficult and we, for women to be composers in particular it was easier for them to be singers but for them to be composers was actually quite frowned upon until relatively recently. In our searches um, looking at women composers we found that in the 19th century for example women were really um, dissuaded from becoming composers um, it wasn't seen as a suitable thing for a woman to do because it was showing that you were having to earn your own living so for example Fanny Mendelssohn uh, Mendelssohn's sister was just as talented a composer as her brother and yet she was dissuaded by her father her father was very very against her actually publishing her compositions and several of them actually got published under Mendelssohn her brother uh, under his name she got married and her husband was slightly more um, willing to accept her as a composer and she started then to publish more works but generally it was not considered the dumb thing for a woman to be a composer far too serious actually far too serious it showed you were too clever and of course it was all about the marriage stakes in those days and uh, the the woman was there to be married and she passed from the possession of her um, her father to the possession of her husband and you didn't want to do anything that would dissuade you from that pride and prejudice is a lovely uh, example of being able to play the piano and marry one of the si Bennett sisters of course is very plain but she plays the piano very well but she's trying to make up in other words for what she doesn't have in the way of looks which were all important back to Elisabetta um, her works actually appear in several uh, anthologies Alfred books in particular and if you go to the classical spirit which is a super set of books the classical spirit there's a minuet in F quite a straightforward one there by Elisabetta and these were all written by the way for the harpsichord of her dates were 1731 to 1765 so she's in that betwixt and between period the um, the Baroque over to the classical and you can hear that she's she is moving on from Baroque music you know we tend to think of 1750 the end of Baroque but actually that wasn't uh, the end of Baroque had kind of started a long time before Bach's music I know um, is, is really the height, the, 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 the pinnacle, if you like. People like Elisabetta was already write, were already writing in the new style. More galant in style than Baroque. So that is in the classical spirit. You can also find more examples of her pieces in this book, which is uh, At the Piano with women composers, some fantastic um, female composers in that. And um, back to my minuet in A again. So this was written for the harp score. This is from a series of lessons, as they were called. So as I said, she was an opera singer, but she also, I think, taught the harp score and she wrote, as a lot of people did, lessons for her pupils. This piece in A major 
is I think very charming, very delightful with some um, some lovely expressive qualities. You know, you get this bit. Which leads. have that many um, pupils who might actually learn that piece of music. Um, certainly adults would really enjoy it, whether they're um, more advanced adults or adults who are indeed a good grade two, because you do need to have quite reliable grade two skills. But I might play this, and I have actually played it to quite a lot of my younger pupils who are well below this level of playing, and actually we pull out some of the musical features because I want them to know that women composers, female composers were out there and they were playing and composing. And in fact, one of them, one of my teenagers, when I have played her some, some music by female composers, her, her, her attitude was, her response was cool. Yeah, it's important that they have these uh, role models that they know they were there. So what I might do with this is I might play and say, oh, I'd like you to conduct. And I'm just going to get them to conduct however they want. I'm not going to worry too much about one, two, three. And I, I do find these days that actually just doing it in parallel like that is a nice fluid and natural thing to do. So one, two, three, have a go yourself. As long as you come down on the strong. you can feel the graceful lilt. With other students what I might do um, is get them to listen to the bass line. <clears throat> so for example you know can they hear the perfect cadence? When they hear the perfect cadence I want them to give me jazz hands let's say especially teaching online you have to think of devices like that to make sure that they can communicate with you without talking all the time. So here we go listen out for the perfect cadences in any key and give me jazz hands when you hear them. Two, three. Hope you're getting those jazz hands there. There we go, one more jazz hands. And of course at that point we've modulated into um, E major just very, very briefly. Oh, jazz hands. So, um, you know, there's another point of interest, how to teach modulation and don't always look for the hardest examples. Sometimes easier pieces are much better. All right. So I said I was going to uh, just share with you a little bit before I finish about the uh, set of variations that follows. And to do that, I'm just going to bring over my computer because they're on here and I'm going to play from that. Um, you probably won't be able to see. I might show it to you in a moment. The, uh, the original that I found. So it comes to the end like this of the minuet and then variation one. And again, that might be a nice listening activity. Which part has changed and which part has stayed the same? Because of course the left hand is just the same as it was. So maybe they can work out how to play that by ear. The right hand's got those lovely triplets. That's the first variation. There is another variation. Um, this one is quite chirpy and goes like this. Again, listen, which part changes, which stays the same? so good it's got all those syncopated rhythms in there really just moving that beat around and then the third variation is really um and i think it's the last one is probably the hardest one it's got the most notes fingers are tripping over themselves so you need some fingering in that um, clearly and what this looks like and it's available on the IMSLP library okay 
it's written out, hand handwritten at the moment. As I say, it's available on the ISMLP library. If you look for Elisabetta Gambarini, and it's from her one of her lessons, and it's the minuet in A. You have to scroll through them a little bit to find this particular one, but it's in there. Well, female composers, a really important thing, I think, uh, as indeed there are many, many gems written out there by female composers that we don't know about yet. We are finding them, but they don't know about them yet. I think it's so important that not just female composers, but also, you know, black, Asian, minority, ethnic um, composers, we take them into our teaching repertoire. We have to start young with this. It should all be integrated from the very start. So I'm going to put out a bit of a challenge here and a bit of a call to all music publishers that actually what we need to be having in our anthologies from now on is not music for women composers and then a separate volume full of men. Actually, we need both of them. We need the best of both integrated into one book. That's the way we can really start to show that composers, good composers are good composers, no matter um, their their. their their sex or no matter the colour or origin of their skin. So publishers, we're over to you. We need teaching anthologies that have good music by everybody in it. Well, I hope that's given you some food for thought. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.